Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we've got um, something a little different today. I thought we'd have a little play around um, with a few different things that we, we've not really done. So this is all a bit of an experiment, if I'm honest, because I've not done this either. So this is going to be a little different. Now, you would have remembered some time ago, we had um, a little video on our lynx spiders. Well, we've now had, uh, they've reached maturity now, and we've got two males and three females. Now, I did a week or so ago try and pair, um, try and pair these spiders up in these pots, because I thought they'd probably be okay, but it didn't really work, and uh, they just weren't happy, and they sort of chased each other around a little bit and done a little bit of whatever, you know, it wasn't going to work. So. It, had, it made me sort of rethink the whole thing. So then I thought to myself, well, it's been known that these guys have been kept in a communal type situation. So I thought what we'd do is we would set up a nice 20 by 20 by 30 Komodo um, so that we've got viewing all the way around because I really would like to try and catch the breeding of these guys on film, if at all possible. So. I thought we'd do one of these. And then I thought, well, how are we going to actually make this look really pretty, make it look authentic? So we went out and we collected a few bits and pieces. And here we got some of it here. We got some teasel here, which I thought would be quite interesting. And uh, we got some eucalyptus as well, which I thought we can literally just cut off and put in just as a little bit of color. And because uh, these guys, live, they live out in the meadows and things. So they're in this, this type of foliage. And this is where they live and hunt and do everything they do. So I thought we could have something really quite cool. Then, of course, I come to the problem of how are we going to make this stuff stand up? How are we going to make this look good? And then I thought, right, we go down to local florists and we get some oasis. And this is, hopefully, we're going to put this in the bottom. We're going to stick our stuff in it. And hopefully it's going to look like it's growing out of the ground. That's the plan. We will see what happens. So, we've got our spiders up here. This is the pair that we're going to put in together. Um, we will set this one up, and then we'll set up another one and put the other pair in that. And then hopefully our males will survive, and we can move them around. So, this is our piece of o oasis. Now, this is a 20 by 20 enclosure. So, we need to cut this. So... We need to cut this in half. So this is the, so what we're going to do, we're just going to mark it. Doesn't need to be perfect. We're just looking at a rough, a rough thing because at the end of the day, this is all going to be hidden. But this Oasis stuff is really quite cool. Um, we might as well try and get a straight line, aren't we? haven't we? So we're going to put that on there like that, and then we're going to you do need a sharp knife. It's not bad, is it? Luckily, she's. You impressed with that, my dear? Yeah. <laughs> she's not twigged. I've nicked one of her carving knives. Right. So we got that. So now we've got two halves because obviously it wasn't wide enough, was it? So we're now going to measure this again. And we know that that is 20 right to the tops. So we can actually, we will cut this at 20 because with Oasis, it is in fact quite soft. And it will give a little bit of give. And we actually want it to um, to be a bit of a snug fit. We don't want it flopping about in there. And do this one as well. So you don't need to be anything too particular. Just a rough. There we go. 
and we can literally go there. There we go. It does, doesn't it? Right, there we have our base. I'm just hoping that it's going to be thick enough. Uh, right, we need to cut this one more time. Make sure that that is 20, 20, yep. Yeah. Remember guys, measure twice, cut once. That's what I was always told as a nipper. I'm going to cut that one there. Cut that one there. I need my stick again. Put that in there like so. Right. Here we go. Right then, let's see if we can't sort this out. So we are gonna put this one here. Ooh. It is slightly under, uh, slightly over, but that is what the plan is. We want it to be, you see how snug that fits in there? That is not going anywhere. And that's the idea. We don't want it moving around. So getting this one in might be a little bit different. I think we've, I think we've over. Yeah, we need to cut that back a little tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit. Not a huge amount. Should take a little bit more off. See if we can't get that to go in there. Oh, look at that. Right. So we'll just squeeze it down again. We've got to be careful because we don't want to. There we go. Look at that. Blue Peter, eat your heart out. Right then. There we go, we've got a couple of uh, spare bits. So now what we've got is we've, we've got our base in, in there now. And the idea being now, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw some substrate clean on top of that, and then hopefully we can actually just put this in. Now one of the things that we need to bear in mind is you only really get one shot at this. Because with this stuff here, as you'll see, if we poke stuff in it, See, that, that there, that holds that perfectly, but it's now got a hole in it. If we decide to move it and we want to put it here, it comes a point where you end up with one big hole and it's no good anymore. So, we need to try and make sure that we get it perfectly right first time round. So what we'll do is we'll throw our bit of substrate in there now. We shall keep it looking nice. It'll also help as well because it'll give a little bit more depth to it all. Not very long, not very long. Um, and also I, I messed up a little bit because this was nice and soft, but I left it out of water. So it's gone off a little bit, but hopefully when we get a little bit of moisture back in, we'll cut the ends off and it will pull a bit of moisture back in. And it might just liven it up a little bit. But we will um, we will see. I left it out of water a bit too long, really. Right then, so, what we got here. So we need to try and work this out. So we're gonna cut that. <coughs> we're gonna do, right, so we can cut this down to here, say. Remember, we don't get many goes at this. I'm going to put that in there. So it's going to be way too tall. So we're not going to be able to keep it as a one piece. So I think what we'll do is we will 
cut it off and we will design our own. Right. There we go, we felt that go through. So now we're going to cut these ones. Have I got some? Mm, not really. Not really. Hold on, hold on. Not quite sure how I'm supposed to work, but I'm sure it's better. Right. If I bring this over here. Wow, you do like to make life difficult. Right then. So, we are, so now you go around that side. I don't believe it. Right then. So we're going to stick this in here. Oh, this is looking all right, isn't it? We're going to cut these off. Get rid of the rubbish. So what we can do is we can measure our heights to get them where we want them to be. And what we're looking for, we're just, we're just looking at trying to create almost like a natural type of thing. There we go. Hopefully this is looking good because I can't see. By putting them at different angles, we're actually giving our spider a bit more space as well. So what we do is we'll keep this one for the other, the other enclosure, and then we've got some of this as well. I thought this looked all this looked pretty cool. It's also very very dry, so we can put some of this in. This is just gonna add another dimension whoa we'll just nip the top off and what we're looking at now is we're just trying to create climbing space that's the idea we're just trying to create a little bit of climbing space for our spider. Just nip the tops off. Okay. We can have a bit more of this, I think. This in here. Now this is all... Um, Collected naturally. This is all stuff that you can find out in the fields. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Snap that off. So yeah, we can find all of this stuff out in the field. So it's all perfectly available. It's not going to cause any harm to your spider. Go right in there. Literally just snip the tops off. And the only reason we're doing this is so that when we open and close our lid, we're not shaking the whole thing around. Hopefully that's starting to look a little bit sensible. We can put a little bit more in there, I think. It doesn't matter with this stuff, if it's a little crowded, it's fine. It's not going to cause any problems. If anything, it's going to give them just that little bit more in which to climb about. There we go. Can I tell you? Now we're looking. Do you think our spider's got plenty of room? Now they will web up and do a few bits and pieces in there themselves. So what we can do now is we can add a little bit of little bit of greenery. And hopefully, this will just add a little bit of colour. A 
and it'll also it'll also give our spider another thing to be able to climb around in. And take them off. And put a bit in this side as well. There we go. How's that looking? Does that look all right? That's look good. We don't want to make it too, too busy because at the end of the day, we're hoping to be able to film these spiders and it'd be really cool if we actually get to see them. That would be nice. Right then, if I can, um, right, if I get rid of some of this stuff now, as you can see, this is all, this whole thing here, the beauty of it is, is the only thing we've had to pay for is the enclosure itself and a little bit of this. This block of Oasis was two pound. So we've got ourselves a really nice enclosure and it's cost us next to nothing. Right. Now then, let's have a look at our link spiders. Do you think I can take this back down now? Bless you. I don't like the sound of that. We'll keep going. Right then, if you guys want to come over here, and we'll have a look at these spiders. Now then, this is our male. We'll see if we can't get him. We pick our bit of stick up. Now these guys have a nasty habit of just jumping off the stick. But if I hold him up here, Yeah, you've got a really good look at him now. Nice close up. You can see the petty palps on this guy. Big black boxing gloves on the end of his petty palps. You see them there? Try and move him round. They do like to be upside down. All right, there we go. You see them big black petty palps? This is the male. Now you'll also notice that he's got quite a long slender abdomen but look at the hairs on them legs I'm hoping we can get really real close-ups here and you get to see these guys in all of their glory they really are fantastic spiders now these are a true spider as well what an incredible looking thing how fearsome would he look if we were the same size you see he's cleaning his petty pouts now before he decided to fall up the other way. So what we'll do now is we will place him in the enclosure. We'll get him to, there you go, look at that, he's walked straight in. Here we go. Oh. He says, no, no, I don't like it. Look, little fella, you need to go back that way. You're probably getting a very good look at him now. Isn't he marvellous? Right, let's try again. Get your brush. Now you go down there. You notice he's hanging on to that little security web that he's got. We're going to try and swap it over now. There we go. We'll just come away really, really gently. There we go. He's in. He's in. What an absolutely cracking spider. And keep him in the center of the screen and then we'll get focus. Got him? Very, very pretty. Now you can see also now when he's in this type of environment, which is more like his natural environment, how well he blends in. And you could easily just walk past and never ever see him. 
so, so cool. See that abdomen move there? He's literally just moving around. He's just putting down a little bit of silk. These guys don't web up as such. They're not like, um, they're not like the orb weavers that create massive, massive webs. These guys don't do that. They seem to lay out more like trip lines and things, and they will physically hunt. They will literally jump and grab at flies and things. And you might have seen on the side of the desk there, we've got curly wing flies, which these guys really like because they're a very, very active fly. Now then, this is our female. And look at the size difference in her. She is absolutely humongous in comparison. Uh, where's she gone? There she is. There you go. Now you can see how much bigger she is. She's got a much more bulbous um, abdomen. But apart from that, they are identical. But you'll also see there's no pedipalps on her. What an amazing creature. You can see the hairs on their legs. They probably shine out well. You can see them. Very, very, very cool colouring. So hopefully now, these guys will fall in love and we will get a little bit of action from them. Right, so what we're going to do, see if we can't get her to come down here. There we go. There we go. She's in. Doesn't she look splendid in there? Absolutely splendid. Now, all being well, I can't get over how good she looks. All being well, these guys will now settle down and uh, they'll live harmoniously together. We will throw a few flies in there just to make sure. They have been fed, they were fed yesterday, and um, they both took on a really big fly. So hopefully their appetites are good, you know, they're not, not too hungry. Now unfortunately with the lynx spiders, they don't have a really, really long life, as many of the true spiders. They're quite short-lived in comparison to our tarantulas. So they have a very hectic lifestyle. Everything happens in a real quick space of time. So what we're hoping for now is we've got our mature pair. Hopefully we'll get a good mating. With any luck, our male will survive. And um, we should get some sacks. Now, as many of the true spiders go, these will lay multiple sacks. So once we can get one good pair in, then there's a good chance that we may get two, three, four sacks from them. It's just going to be a question of time and hoping that our female stays in good condition to be able to produce these sacks. Aren't they wonderful? Absolutely wonderful. I'm super, super stoked with them. And I'm really glad, actually, that we've... Uh, I'm going to take this down now. All right. I am really, really glad that we've... Um, We've gone over and we've done this and we've changed changed this and made this new environment because I think this really shows them off well. And although in these pots, they're adequate, they do the job, they keep your spider, but you cannot beat having a nice display enclosure. It really, really does make the difference. And if we can get egg sacs in here, we will allow them to hatch in here as well. And then hopefully, you know, we'll just see lots and lots of little baby ones. And then when we do find them babies, with these guys, it's possible to allow them to stay in there. Some will be predated on and others will survive. The, the, obviously, the larger ones, they will survive. It's like our males coming over to have a little look. And um, so we can do that. Or we can catch them up, separate them, grow them on, which is probably what we will do with the first sack that we get. 
And then later on, if we manage to get a couple of sacks, we will leave one of them to just do its own thing and see what happens and see what the results are. Because once these guys have done their season, that is going to be it. They're, they're going to be finished. Oh, you know, the males aren't particularly long lived. And the females, again, I think they only, I'm pretty sure they only do a season. Um, and then they'll be gone. So what happens in the, in the wild state is these guys will lay a sack then that sack will sit dormant over a winter period and then they will hatch out in the springtime. And then you'll get this big influx of spiders all the way through the summer. And this is how they go. Unfortunately, we saw exactly the same thing with, um, oh, oh, what would they call them? The, uh, the, the tiger spiders, which we see, the European ones. And we had a couple of those and they laid egg sacks and, uh, and then they perish straight afterwards. They die straight afterwards, which is such a shame because they are very, very beautiful spiders. So it's all down to the production of them sacks, bringing on the following year's livestock, as it were. Well, they are amazing. I am so, so pleased with them. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's something a little different. And um, hopefully we've got some really nice close-ups there and get some real cool images of them. We will take a couple of photographs of these as well. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, we have some luck. We have got another pair, we'll do exactly the same. We'll set them up the same as this, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, very, very exciting. Lovely spider. Right then, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys. <laughs>